Lord Mamanka. It's the glorious dawn of the Sorcerer Kingdom. But what form shall it take? What country shall Lord Ains forge in his boundless wisdom? It matters not. Whatever your vision may be, it is my sworn duty to follow it. Please, my lord, show it to me. Oh, show me everything, Lord Ains! Today's maid. Is there anything else you need? Hmm. I only ask that you rest well. You worked hard staying up all night. That's very kind of you, my lord. I'm grateful, but it's my job to serve you the best I can. Don't worry about me. They're really not taking a hint. Oops. How do I tell them these bedside shifts are a bit excessive? What a pain. What if I said that I didn't want servants at all? That I wanted us to be equals. Excuse me, Lord Ainz. Good morning. I will be assisting Maybe. you today. Maybe if we did that, it would be like the good old days. It would be like having my friends back. First off, let's get you dressed. What would you like to wear today? Here's an idea. Why don't you decide, Feith? That's perfect. I know just the look. Leave it to me. You'll be thrilled. <laughs> I hate to question your expertise, but I do worry that this robe might be a bit gaudy for me. There's no need to be insecure. Trust me, a lesser ruler might look pretentious with all those jewels, but you can definitely pull this off. Your black cook certainly has a wonderful mystique, but it's nice to see you in other colors. Good morning, Nudu Nudu. Time for breakfast. Lord Ainz? Hmm. Lady Albedo and the Elder Liches are here. Very well. You may let them in. Greetings, my lord. It's a pleasure, as always. What a dashing ensemble you're wearing. Why, it seems as if it's glowing. But these fine jewels wouldn't shine so brightly if they adorned anyone but you. Well, thank you for your kind words, Alberto. Uh, but I was merely stating the truth. I would never engage in meaningless flattery, my lord. It's only natural that I you're... I get the idea. Moving on to the business at hand. These are the documents you put together last night. Correct. Hmm. Nope. I don't understand any of this. I'm just an office worker, not even management. There's no way I can run an entire kingdom. But I can't exactly tell them that. Now can I? I'll just pretend to read these so I look the part at least. Okay, last one. Huh. What is this? It's a report about some materials, I think. But the details don't make any sense to me. Oh. Did something catch your attention? No, just lost in thought. More importantly, have you constructed a code of law for the kingdom? I've discussed the matter with Demiurge, but we've only come up with an initial draft. I speak with confidence in many subjects, but when it comes to social law, I regret to say that I'm not very knowledgeable. But a supreme ruler such as you commands all laws. <gasps> I see, you didn't bother learning any laws because you're above them, so they're meaningless to you. Yes, uh, naturally. So, I'll allow you to proceed as you see fit. I believe in you. Thank you. I'll do my very best. Hmm. Is something wrong? I didn't mean to stare. Your smile was so cute it caught me off guard. Excuse me, I can't find the words. This is terribly awkward. Oh my, I'm so embarrassed. But, <clears throat> moving on. Let's handle our usual business. These are various proposals from the people of Nazarene. I'm going through them personally so that they remain anonymous. That way I can sneak in my own ideas too. Here's the first one. I think it would be good to set up an educational system for the children. If we find and raise talented individuals, they'll continue to strengthen Nazarene for years to come. Interesting. 
Most likely from Yuri Alpha. It is a foolish suggestion. Pigs do not need knowledge. All they need to do is live, breathe, and die for their master. I agree in a sense, at least. Knowledge is worth more when it's monopolized. But that's only one way to look at the situation. I think the proposal could work out quite well, actually. <laughs> Although it's not exactly what Yuri had in mind, I think we can salvage the play by establishing an orphanage in Iranto. A more traditional school may open Nazarik's secrets and technology to espionage. But if we pull prospective students from the orphanage, we can guarantee that only the most talented and loyal candidates are elevated. The orphanage itself can be run by the war widows created in the recent conflict. So not only will you give children a home, you'll also give jobs to poverty-stricken women. The masses will surely applaud this. Your popularity will rise quickly. Then have Estonia and Negretto attend to the matter. Uh, Release them from house arrest as soon as we're done here. Perhaps I should remind you, my lord. During our attack on the capital, they were ordered to kill the humans that you captured. To maintain the secrecy of Yaldabaoth's relationship to Nazarik. Quite simple. And yet those two went against your orders. They sheltered an infant in secret. Never mind their house arrest. They should be executed for their foul treachery. Oh, Beto. Oh, please, my lord. Don't look at me with that piercing gaze. Oh. <sighs> but your orders are absolute. I won't question them further. I will release those two from house arrest. And don't execute them afterwards. Please. Of course. Now, the next proposal. I would like to suggest making uniforms to give Nazarik a stronger sense of unity. An exceedingly tasteless proposal. Who suggested such a thing? I'm sorry, it was me. Let me look into this matter. The perpetrator must face punishment. These are supposed to be anonymous. Also, when I asked everyone for suggestions, I promised there would be no repercussions. Fine, then. Oh. You have guests. It's Lady Aura and Lord Mare. Let them in. <laughs> uh, I missed you! Good morning, Lord Eines. Um, good morning, my lord. I like your robe. Thank you, I suppose. Good morning, Alberto. Is something wrong? You didn't make an appointment first, so... <laughs> hey, wait! <laughs> ah! hmm. <laughs> ah! Is this what you wanted? Huh? His lap? How dare you! It's no big deal. He doesn't mind. You can come, too. Well, my lord, with your permission, is there room for me? Alberto, please. You're an adult. <laughs> Don't mind her. What brings you here? No reason. We just wanted to see you. Very well, then. I'm happy to see you, too. <laughs> Lord I... What if I was a baby? Hmm? <laughs> you know, I think I've had enough lap time for today. Here, why don't you take my spot? That's very generous of you. All right, Alberto. Come here. Thank you! You can sit on my lap, but I'm not going to pick you up. <laughs> so soft. And wait, what's that fragrance? Is there a problem, my lord? I was just admiring your lovely smell. If you'd like to sniff me some more, by all means, be my guest. Sniff me for an hour. Or sniff all day! An hour is a bit excessive, I think. <laughs> Though perhaps I could sniff for a bit. It smells so familiar. What Lord is it? Is? Hmm? It looks really pervy when you do that. No, oh, sorry. All right, we've had our fun. Get down. <sighs> This isn't fair! Aura got on much earlier than me. I deserve more time! Stop whining! You get to spend way more time with them than we do! That's only natural, isn't it? I have to, for work. Oh, I see. So it's just a job. Whereas I came here to visit Lord Eines because I wanted to. Malbetto <laughs> is one thing, but why is Aura acting like this? Maybe she lacks a father figure, and she wants more attention from me? This environment isn't exactly ideal for someone's emotional development. Maybe there's a kingdom of dark elves they could visit and make some friends. Um, are you angry? <sighs> hmm. Sorry, no, not at all. My mind was wandering. Worried about that issue from before? Yes, that's right. Naturally. 
What at you? I've given it some thought, and I have a couple of suggestions that could be helpful. I would expect nothing less. Wait, is something bad going on? Let's tell them. They might have some good ideas of their own. I agree. Please explain it to them in a simple manner, in a way that's easy to understand. For their sake, of course. Also, get off my lap. <sighs> All right. Simply put, there's not enough trade. Eron Tell is facing a shortage of goods. That sounds bad. Oh! It must have been in that document. Until recently, Eron Tell was a vital city of commerce. But the sudden shift in power seems to have worried merchants. We have precious little outside trade. The amount of goods in circulation keeps dropping. So what should we do? We don't need to worry about it. I'm sure Lord Aynes will fix everything. Yeah! Right! Alberto, have we taken any action yet? We have. With any luck, we'll be reaping the seeds that Demiurge sowed in no time. I see. I'm sure he has it under control, but I thought he was busy setting up plans in the Holy Kingdom. In the meantime, I have a small matter I need to attend to as well. With your permission, I'd like to go to the Riestes Kingdom for now. What? But you're responsible for all of Nazarek's domestic affairs. That might be tough. I promise I'll return as soon as possible. Pandora's actor can take my place for a while, can't he? I suppose that might work. I'll speak with him directly about the matter. I trust your judgment. I expect good results. And as for Demiurge... No, never mind. Oh. Now, let's continue. Since the two of you are here, I'll listen to your opinions as well. Opinions on what? On anything. I'm looking for ideas to improve the Sorcery Kingdom. Speak freely. Ooh! In that case, I have a great idea! Oh, go ahead. I think that all of the boys should dress up like girls, and all of the girls should dress up like boys as required by law. Yes, I agree. That sounds good. Buku Buku Chagamo, why? That was a close call. Even if it's a degenerate indulgence, Alberto won't question one of the supreme beings. If I hadn't convinced the twins that their creator wanted them to be unique, the kingdom would have taken quite the turn. Hmm. Wake up, Hamski. Uh, is it morning already? Oh, hey there, master of mine! Call me Lord Irons in public. Remember, you're the riding beast of the great hero Momon. So, why is that Death Knight with you? We're training partners, we are, so we're together all the time. Oh, that's right. We were experimenting to see if you two could obtain martial arts. Well, never mind that. I'm looking for Momon, or rather, Pandora's actor. Have business with your body double, do you? He should be in that building over there. Oh, Supreme One! My dear, beloved creator, Lord Eins! Greetings are not necessary. Sit. Sir! Hot, 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 hot. Come on! There's an empty seat right across from What's me! What's wrong? Tell me. So, Internet. There's no reason to be so uppity. I just need to go over a few things with you. First of all, how are you faring as Momon's body double? No issues, sir. In fact, good, good. Do you have any other concerns? Uh, actually, there is something. It's a tragedy. I haven't touched a magic item in ages. That means no regular uh, maintenance and no organizing our data uh, crystals either. Work left please. undone. You must rectify this matter, my lord. Let me touch them just for a moment, those sweet magic items. Did I really make you so... Emotional. Yes, these feelings overflowing from my heart were a gift from you. Of course, it's all coming back to me now. Please allow me to return to the treasury and fulfill my only purpose in life. I understand. Let me speak to Shout here. I'll have her get a teleportation ring for you, all right? Sir, yes, nope, sir. Stop, uh, stop. Uh, I understand that your manner of speech is my doing. Probably. Mm. But I have a suggestion. Although I don't recall why I set you to these specifications, I'm honored that you've stuck to them so diligently. However, I also believe that a child should surpass the expectations of their parents. Lord Eines, you see me as your child? Indeed, I do. Thus, there's no need to salute or act quite so extravagantly before me. Ah, of course. I want to see you do new and different things. 
things that exceed my imagination. I want to see your growth as an individual. I understand, Father. I will abide by your wishes and blossom into a beautiful new me. Good. Wait. Actually, one more thing. Do as you like, but don't mention this conversation to anyone. There will be unrest if the others think I give you preferential treatment. Right. That goes for you as well, Thief. Hmm. I will take my leave now. One moment. Hmm. There is something I want to ask you, if you don't mind. What kind of ruler do you intend to be in this new kingdom of yours? Many people come to Momon with trepidation in their hearts. They ask what will become of this country, what will become of them. Will they be forced to work like slaves? Will they be sent off to fight in a war? What form should the Sorcerer Kingdom take? Hmm. Undead servants are naturally quite productive. They require neither sleep nor rest, after all. But I wonder... Thief, what do you think about this country? Well, my lord, thanks to your wisdom as a ruler, life here is easy and convenient. However, it troubles me that no one comes running to worship you. They hide when you show your reverent figure. I don't understand why they would do such a shameful thing. I see. And what do you think of humans? Do you find them to be insipid? I do. They weren't created by any of the supreme beings, after all. They're wretched creatures. It seems like all the NPCs see humans as inferior. As misguided as that is. I used to hear the same sorts of things from Narbral. She called humans worms when we traveled together. Huh. Haven't been to the guild in a while. Is no one here? Oh! Greetings, Your Majesty! Not many quests available. Yes, I'm terribly sorry, my lord. I'm not blaming you. I was just curious. The board used to be overflowing with jobs. At least, that's what I heard from the adventurer Momon. Yes, that's true. But monster hunting and security quests are no longer necessary. So personal requests are the only thing available now. In other words, my undead forces are properly maintaining the peace. Adventuring isn't all it was cracked up to be, so that's for the best. Is the Guildmaster in? Yes, of course. Wait just a moment and I'll let him know that you're here. Your Majesty, it's an honor for you to visit this humble establishment. Forgive me for offering such a meager welcome. Let's talk, Einzak. I'm surprised the Sorcerer King knows the name of a commoner like me. Of course. I feel like a sleazy salesman. But I have to get him on board for this to work. Is there something on your mind? Ah, I'll cut to the chase. I'd like to absorb the Adventurer's Guild into the Sorcerer Kingdom. Well, then no one will stop you. Is that so? I heard that the Adventurer Guilds don't like to align themselves with any nation. You have no objections. I won't protest. Hmm. No, that's too easy. I imagine you'll tell the adventurers to leave the kingdom. Then, once they've all cleared out, you'll hand me an empty shell of an organization. Tell me this. Why is it that the adventurer guilds never involve themselves with the government? It's quite simple. Because adventurers exist to protect the people. If we lent our strength in a war, then that would betray our purpose. Hm. Your duty is to protect the people? And how would you define people, exactly? Do you only mean humans? I don't follow, my lord. What about elves and half-elves? Races that live alongside humans? Well, yes. They're included, of course. Aren't elves treated as slaves in the Empire? It doesn't sound like you're protecting them. <laughs> what about other intelligent creatures? Ones with less traditionally appealing forms, I mean. Like lizardmen, orcs, and goblins. Your Majesty. Those are subhumans. Are you trying to mock me? Hmm. As an undead, they're not much different than humans to me. <laughs> well, have a seat. Listen to my proposal. To me, the ideal adventurer is not a mere fighter, but someone who explores the unknown. 
And through that exploration, they have the unique opportunity to make our world a better place. Can you elaborate, please? Until now, most of your jobs were monster hunting or security details, mercenary work. But there is no need for that in the Sorcerer Kingdom. My subordinates are tireless and much stronger than the average adventurer. But while they're quite adept at killing, I'm not confident they would do as well charting a course into unknown lands, especially if the goal is to establish amicable relations with the people there. Embarrassing, I know. Your Majesty. That's why I want adventurers to take up this role. I can protect the kingdom. They will explore beyond it. Why not simply post a request? I don't see why the government needs to get involved in this. If I post my request, and problems arise between unknown races or countries, will the guild be able to resolve these issues on their own? Since you're an independent body, the kingdom would disavow any involvement. But since you exist in my territory, I won't tolerate any actions that cause this kingdom harm. That's awful! Which is why I need to take the Adventurer's Guild under my wing if I want this to succeed. But this is an important operation, so I vow to give you my complete support. There's something I need to get straight first. You talk about exploring new lands, but are you only doing that because you intend to invade them later? That's not the plan, but I can't make any promises. If we find a nation that is an imminent threat to our kingdom, we may need to take action. Fair enough. And consider this. I have enough military power to do all the invading I choose. I don't expect adventurers to gather intel and chart a course with that when I have more effective means. As things stand now, Adventurers are simply glorified exterminators. I want to elevate them beyond that. I want them to embody the spirit their title invokes. Your guild will be reborn. You will become adventurers in the true sense of the word. It is a very compelling offer, your majesty. I do admit. Mm. Count me in. You brought a spark back to this old adventurer. The Unknown's calling for us, and it's time to answer. Faith. My lord? There's nothing I treasure more than servants like you. You're the creations left behind by my beloved comrades. I'm honored you think that. But I must bestow love upon those I rule over as well. This is my kingdom after all. I must show it proper care and affection. Absolutely, my lord. I agree. Then, let us create a utopia. A land as sweet as honey. A dream that never ends. A kingdom where the people bow before me in reverence and gratitude. How wonderful. I can hardly wait to see it. But this will not be a utopia for humans alone. All humanoid races shall flourish beneath my banner. And all non-humanoid races as well. We shall let the world know. Eternal prosperity can only be found under the rule of the Sorcerer Kingdom! This is my purpose. I'll recreate the Guild of Einzel Gone here in this world. And if my comrades are still out there somewhere, then maybe they'll take notice. And I can show them my work with pride in my heart.